uh, speaking of bangers, are we going to get one on Saturday between the Tar Heels and the Blue Devils? I think so. I think so, too. I think so, too. Unranked teams. It's funny, uh, at the Duke press room yesterday, Luke Dukaki, the News and Observer, Aaron Beard of the Associated Press, Brendan Marks, the Athletic, and I just kind of say, wait, when's the last time these two teams met up while they were unranked? And Marks looks at me like, are you being serious right now? It was two years ago. I'm like, dude, pandemic time doesn't count. I don't. I barely remember anything that happened in the pandemic. But yes, two years ago is the last time they met unranked. It's going to be unranked on on Saturday. Dennis, can you hit the frequency where the people who work for the Associated Press, who I helped during the football season, can't hear what I'm about to say? Yeah, I got it. All right, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Where's this going? There isn't anything more worthless in this world than rankings for college basketball. Oh, I'm with you on that. Do you know why? They play what was a 64-team tournament. It is now a 68-team tournament. Yeah. No one, not a single person on this earth, remembers who was number one when the tournament began, no. when the season began. No one. So what a team is ranked in college basketball mm-hmm. does not matter. What's more worthless? Your current net or your AP ranking? Ha ha. You were on the what you you're the, these people are very similar. The, they're very similar. Uh-huh. Okay. You're you're getting into the Venn diagram now. Uh-huh. What happened last night? Uh I because the people who don't like the net right now are Clemson and Wake Forest. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Although, listen, we'll, get, we'll get to Wake in a listen, second. Listen, I'm not gonna defend the net or because we don't know the true formula. That's my for and the that record. Is, and that for is the if record. anybody wants to bang on what it is, there you go. You, that's that's perfectly say, acceptable. That is the that for the record. My only but issue with net is that what no, I no, don't no. know what it is. Okay, well that's fine. <laughs> so that's that's my only beef with the net and There's, the way people obsess over but it. But what I see on the the Twitters on okay. a daily basis okay. is I don't understand. Clemson beat Team X, Y, and Z, and yet yesterday they dropped 25 points, and they're behind Team X, Y, and Z. What happened last night? Clemson lost on the road to Boston College. So maybe, maybe, I don't know, guys, maybe the computer knows more than the human. I I don't know. Or maybe that's just college basketball. Maybe that's just college basketball where top teams can lose. Are they a top team? Are well, they going to make the tournament? Is well, Clemson no. going to make the tournament? I think what Clemson is. What Clemson, there are no Clemson basketball fans, right, but so I would can love to trigger them right, right now right, because right, right. I, I'm not sure they're going to get in. So here's the th- here's the thing about Clemson. They have terrible losses. They do have terrible losses. But they also don't have losses to like other good teams, so to speak. So they got like these quad four losses, but they also haven't lost any of these Q1 games either. So there's, Have they, they played? Any they, haven't, they haven't played a lot of them. But yes, it's entirely possible that Clemson can go from being atop the league to end January and hosting an NIT game at the end of the season. We've seen it's it entire- happen before. We've seen it happen before. We've seen it happen before. So, yeah, you're going to lose a game where you don't make 17 shots in a row. They missed 17 shots in a row last night. You're going to lose games. Heck, you mentioned Wake Forest and the reason why some 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 Wake Forest fans are upset about the net ranking and everything else. Wake Forest is easier to understand. They finally hit the meaty portion of their schedule, and there's no shame in losing the games that they've lost to. I think that includes Virginia, obviously NC State uh, this past weekend, and then a tough one against Duke last night. And they were still within two points of the game with the last second three there by, I think it was Appleby at the end of the game, their key guys weren't making shots. I mean, basketball ain't hard sometimes. Yeah. Gotta what, make shots. What people don't understand about when you involve a computer yeah. is it's a book. And it's the book of the season. It's not just the teams that you beat. It's all of the games that they played and what their opponents' opponents have done. So, yes, on a daily basis, when you add hundreds of points of data for yeah. hundreds of teams, mm-hmm. guess what? You have wide variations. Mm-hmm. So all of the complaining about we won and we we fell. Last night they lost to a bad Boston College team on the road, mm-hmm. and they only fell two spots in the net. So please, Clemson fans, stop your whinging. All five of you. Yeah, both of you. Clemson basketball fans. Yes. All five of you. Yes. Because I know they're very busy today at Name, Image, and Likeness Day at uh, Clemson because because Dabo says now it's time. And they were doing this, of course, in the Clemson, if I get this right, 
the Clemson Athletic brand. And they, see, they don't like it when I say that. The Clemson Branding Clemson. Athletic Institute. Mm-hmm. They they tweeted a picture. They were so proud of themselves today. I'm like, uh, yeah, Alabama, uh, a meeting room. Yeah, Alabama <laughs> unveiled one a couple of weeks ago too. Some like business center. It's essentially one of those. Uh, what's the it, name? It, of, it, what, what's the name of the office places? Like, like they f- got them in North Hills, right? No, but it looks like a Fairfield Inn lobby. The, the, no, is no, what it is. No, what it looks Maybe like it to is. me. What it looks like to me. I forgot the the name of the companies where uh, the remote office sites. Like you don't actually have an office, but if you need to rent oh, an office. We work the scam that is we work well, they weren't the only ones but yeah that's basically what it yeah. is we work right like these weird communal office spaces is that what it looks like to me that's what it looks like to me but yeah they're like these nil rooms nah it's a it's a conference room where you can bring in speakers uh, to talk about brands me, sir, and things like it's that. the clemson Sorry. athletic branding institute yeah and shout out to Dabo swinney on signing day whichever what signing day number five or whatever this is uh, where he talked about not a single one of these guys came to Clemson for name, image, and likeness. No. But please give to our name, image, and likeness collectives because we don't want anybody to leave mm. because of name, image, and likeness. So good, man. So good. So I, we, how do you tie this all together? You're wondering, man, Ovi's and Jillia were on some weird tangents. No, we're not. We're tying all this together. It's all in how you want to present things, okay? And that's how it is with college basketball right now. I brought up rankings. You're like, what do rankings matter? It's well, how you want to present it. For TV purposes, showing an AP Top 25 is f- easy for people to understand. You literally have a it's tournament. That's people, the difference between easy. college basketball and college football. Again, they never settled anything on the field in college I've football for you. the longest no, time. I don't disagree In college with you. basketball, they had a tournament yeah, and have, have I get had that. a tournament. I get that. But for television purposes, for the audience to understand the relative good or badness of a team, putting a number next to you is easy to do. And the last time I checked, ESPN is not throwing up a net number on there because then they have to go through the process of explaining net, and I don't think anybody wants to do that. They're not going to put Ken Palm numbers up there. It's like when you watch NBC Sunday Night Football and they put those, you, you talk PFF Fugazi. Grades. You talk Fugazi. You love that word. I'll tell you Fugazi. Some offensive lineman's PFF score. What? Anyway. So people like numbers. That's how they gauge how good or bad something is, which then gets us to Duke and Carolina and whether or not these teams are good or bad. I don't think it matters. In fact, I don't think a lot of what happens on Saturday matters because here's the thing. As I'm watching Duke last night, for the record, I like this Duke team. This Duke team has a level of fight that last year's Duke team did not have. Last year's Duke team might be more talented because of Paolo Bancaro and the crew, but what did I figure out real quick with that Duke squad last season? Front runners. You call it sunny day. They really enjoy dunking on you. We saw it at Wake Forest, and I'm like, man, when the going's good, y'all love it. You're hamming for the camera. Mark Williams is doing the on top thing all the time. But when the going got tough, they didn't know what to do. This team does. They ain't pretty. They go through scoring droughts, but man, they fight. They will fight. And that's going to be interesting to see against Carolina in that Armando Baycott will probably face the toughest interior defense he'll see in the ACC. Okay? So that relies on Caleb Love to have what he's had in these games, which are big nights from three. Or R.J. Davis, and depending on how his black eye is, big nights, drawing fouls, hitting shots, etc. Or some other player that maybe you haven't thought of stepping up. So that's kind of how I see this game playing out. But when I say it doesn't matter, all right, so let's say Duke wins. Then what? Then what? What happens? Carolina's got like immunity. You know? It's like, oh, cool. But this season, yeah, I, I understand your because, larger cause, point cause about there's the rivalry, no, There's but... nobody, because here's the thing, there's nobody on that Duke squad. Jeremy Roach, right? But there's no, what's, and this is tough to articulate, I'll admit. What is this team's connection to last year? The Duke team. What happened at Cameron Indoor Stadium or in the final four? Oh, they go, what, Blakes and, and Roach. That's it. That's it. And they got the coaching staff, but as we've discussed, John Shire is here for John Shire. What happened last year, that was Coach K's farewell tour. He had his instances where he filled in, but he really starts his career now in his chapter in the rivalry, which was not a part of sure. last year. So the stakes for Duke are a little bit different. Well, we we have assigned a finality to last year's wins. Yes, right? we have. That simply has not been what the norm is in the triangle. You want to go back to when NC State ran the league. You want to go back to Everett Case. Oh, it must be, it's over. 
They got the best coach. Well, then <laughs> right. here comes this guy named. Then Vic Bubis goes to Duke. Oh, what's Carolina? Get? Oh, they got Dean Smith. 82, Dean Smith, final, uh, seven, go to 74. State mm-hmm. wins it. Oh, my God, they got David Thompson. This is the best team ever. Well, Phil Ford decides to go to Carolina. All of a sudden, back to Carolina. Carolina wins their first title in 82. What happens the very next year? NC State wins. Duke wins 91, 92. What happens the very next year? Carolina wins. Carolina makes this crazy Final Four run in 00. What happens the very next year? Duke wins the title. So these teams have a tendency. 15, Duke wins. Very next year, Carolina goes to the final. Mm-hmm. You know, we, we, we forget the back and forth because, well, quite frankly, NC State has decided not to hold up its end of the bargain. No. But there, there's always a push and pull to the universe. Look, and I think that's what it, that's what matters. Can Like I told you, said to you yesterday, this is a new chapter. This is. is the new beginning. This is, is Shire versus Davis. So h- how will it begin? I don't know. But I am curious to see how it plays out. I'll be I'll be watching. I'll be there. You mentioned NC State. I'll throw Wake Forest into this. As these games have been good, the Big That's Four the games have been good. That's the thing. Uh, at at one point this season, I was kind of wondering, man, this is going to be a slog of a basketball season. But you know, it's actually played through, and we can debate the talent levels and the NCAA tournament chances of any of these teams. Credit when credits due, man. When any of the Big Four teams have played, we've gotten some entertainment. We've gotten some drama. That's all I ask for. So shout out to the big four, man. It's been an entertaining basketball season within that group.